everybody. Welcome to the Darren Marlar Radio Show. I'm Darren Marlar, and coming up today, does being bilingual make you smarter? Well, I have the answer for you on that one uh, today on the show. Could peer pressure be a good thing? We'll find out. A mugging victim gives the crooks a run for their money, or should I say, a run for her money. That's in today's Moment of Duh. Hey, how would you like to find a surefire way to prevent hangovers? I have the solution for you later on. And when robbing the liquor store, make sure you're not under the influence of that liquor first. Our today's Brain on Drug story coming up later in the show as well. Hey, today's weird holidays are up next, and they are an all or nothing kind of thing. You'll find out what I mean by that up next. I'm Darren Marlar. Yes, once again, it is the Darren Marlar Radio Show. And remember, whatever happens, probably will. Wednesday comes in the middle of the week, middle of the week, middle of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wednesday comes in the middle. And now another useless fact. Archaeologists digging at the site of the Wright Brothers' home in Dayton, Ohio, have uncovered a button, two nails, and some broken china that may have belonged to the Wright Brothers which finally answers the question as to where their luggage ended up. Welcome back to the Darren Marlar Radio Show. Let's take a look at today's weird, wacky, strange, zany, odd, bizarre, quirky, unusual holidays. Today is Wednesday, July 26th. You have 151 shopping days until Christmas. Today is National Coffee Milkshake Day. Take your love for coffee, your love for iced coffee, you kick that up a notch with a few scoops of vanilla ice cream. Oh yeah, I am in. Uh, today is the birthday of the U.S. Post Office. On July 26, 1775, the Second Continental Congress established the first formal postal system for the U.S. Benjamin Franklin became the first uh, postmaster general back then. You know, through rain, through sleet, through blinding snow, nothing will stop us from getting unwanted junk mail to you. And today is all or nothing day. And I have I thought about this. I have no idea what this is all about. I mean, how do you go about celebrating all or nothing? I mean, you can't really do that half-heartedly, can you? I mean, after all, it is all or nothing. So I'm leaning towards the latter of the two choices, and I will do my celebrating by doing uh, nothing. But rest assured, I will put an all or nothing attitude behind that, giving my full energy and mind to the task of doing nothing for the sake of the holiday. Does being bilingual make you smarter? Well, the answer to that is coming up. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar, and if you like scary stories, well, you might want to check out my show Weird Darkness. It's online only, and you can find it on at uh, WeirdDarkness.com. It's actually a special page on my website, WeirdDarkness.com. All right, so what would you do if you were forced to pay child support for a child that's not even yours? How is that for something that is totally outrageous? What time is it, boys and girls? Totally outrageous. In Texas, 45-year-old Gabriel Corneo, he has been told by the courts that he must pay $82,000 in back child support for a child that is not only not his, but he's only met once. Back in 2003, a child support court ruled that Corneo had to pay child support to his ex-girlfriend who had recently given birth because she vowed that there was no way he wasn't the rightful dad. Well, Corneo, who is currently raising three children of his own and two nephews, he claimed that he was not made aware of his daughter and only found out about the child support payments last year when a deputy served him court papers claiming that the state of Texas lists him as having another child. Well, soon he met the minor for the first and only time, describing her as a wonderful girl, but then a DNA test proved that he was not her father. But get this, though. Texas Family Code Chapter 161 states that even if one is not the biological father, they still owe support payments that accrued before the paternity test proves otherwise. So in Corneo's case, that amounts to $82,000. The case is due back in court next month. Totally outrageous. 
I'm Darren Marlar. If you'd like to hear the show anytime, you can find it at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Coming up next, it's your birthday wrap-up. But first, does being bilingual make you smarter? Well, here's another reason to encourage your kids to learn a second language. Being fluent in a foreign tongue it increases cognitive abilities in the younger years and makes the brain healthier later in life, offering protection against dementia, say experts. Researchers at York University in England they say speaking two languages can strengthen key brain pathways and enhance mental flexibility. Bilingualism it has a beneficial effect on cognitive development in children, says study leader Dr. Ellen Bielstock. It also makes the brain more resilient as people grow older. Kind of makes me wish I'd paid attention to Spanish class when I was a freshman in junior high. Welcome to Canadian Language Tapes, Volume 1. When you hear this sound, please repeat what's been said. Starting now with the Canadian alphabet. Let's begin. A, A, B, A, C. Wait. Why doesn't A come after C? Uh, no, A is first, eh? A's first, and then C? No, then B, eh? Well, where's C? After B, eh? So B is first. No, A is first, eh? A? A. Then C? No, B, eh? So B is first. No, A is first, eh? All right, look. Just say the first three letters of the Canadian alphabet. A, B, C, eh? So there is an A after C? No, it's D then, eh? C, A, D? No, A is first, eh? Okay, let's try a Canadian sentence. Okay, I come from B, C, eh? Now, translate that. Translate? You know, what does it mean in English? Oh, it means I come from British Columbia. Isn't there an A after the C? No, the A comes first, eh? All right, fine, forget it. Look, this has been Canadian Language Tapes, Volume 1. Don't bother looking for Volume 2. And now, another useless fact. A 40-year-old British man entered the record books by becoming the first person ever to run around the world. It took him five years and eight months to do it. It would have been just three years, but he kept refusing to stop and ask for directions. Today's birthday wrap-up, it is Wednesday, July 26th, and celebrating birthdays today from Pearl Harbor, The Aviator, Van Helsing, Serendipity, uh, the Underworld series, which I just can't get enough of for some strange reason, uh, Kate Beckinsale, she is 45 today. From Speed, Hope Floats While You Were Sleeping, The Proposal, one of the cutest gals in Hollywood, even even despite her age, she's still just, I, I, I could not get enough of this girl, Sandra Bullock, she's 53 today. And uh, I, I've already made plans to marry her if things don't work out with my wife of 22 years. My wife doesn't know that yet, but uh, and neither does Sandra. So, all right, well, I, I'll, I'll only do that if my wife gives me permission, though, because I really do love my wife. Uh, also, uh, actor Kevin Spacey, you, you'll remember him from The Usual Suspects, uh, Seven, K-Pax, Pay It Forward. Uh, also, of course, now um, uh, House of Cards, which is hugely successful. Kevin Spacey is 58 today. And that adorable skater Dorothy Hamill, she is 61 today. Could peer pressure be a good thing? We're going to find out the answer to that coming up in just a few minutes. I'm Darren Marlar. Today's question impossible. What was the name of Walt Disney's family dog? What was the name of Walt Disney's family dog? I'll have the answer for you coming up here in just a few minutes. Right now, though, it's time for a joke of the day. A store that sells husbands has just opened in New York City where a woman may go to choose a husband. Well, among the instructions at the entrance is a description of how the store operates. You may visit the store only once. There are six floors, and the attributes of the men increases as the shopper ascends the flights. There is, however, a catch. You may choose any man from a particular floor, or you may choose to go up a floor, but you cannot go back down except to exit the building. And again, you can only shop here once. So a woman goes to the husband store to find a husband, and on the first floor, the sign on the door reads, Floor 1. These men have jobs and love the Lord. Well, she moves on to the second floor, and the second floor sign says, Floor 2. These men have jobs, love the Lord, and love kids. The third floor sign reads, Floor 3. 
These men have jobs, love the Lord, love kids, and are extremely good-looking. Wow, she thinks, but she feels compelled to keep going. She goes to the fourth floor, and the sign reads, Floor 4, these men have jobs, love the Lord, love kids, are drop-dead gorgeous, and help with the housework. Oh, mercy me, she exclaims, I can hardly stand it! Still, though, she goes to the fifth floor, and the sign reads, Floor 5, these men have jobs, love the Lord, love kids, are drop-dead gorgeous, help with the housework, and have a strong romantic streak. Well, she is so tempted to stay there, but her suspense and her curiosity, they get the best of her, and she continues on to the sixth floor. She gets to the sixth floor, and the sign reads, Floor 6. You are visitor 4,363,012 to this floor. There are no men on this floor. This floor is here to simply prove that women are impossible to please. Thank you for shopping at the husband store. Watch your step as you exit the building and have a nice day. If you like a few more laughs after the show, well, you can check out my daily dose of weird news. I've got a new episode every weekday, and you can find it at dailydoseofweirdnews.com. Up next, a mugging victim gives the crooks a run for their money, or should I say a run for her money. Our moment of duh is on the way. So could peer pressure be a good thing? Well, teenagers who have close friends, they're more likely to have better health as young adults. According to Health Day News, uh, they did some research with the University of Virginia in Charlottesville. And they said these results indicate that remaining close to, as opposed to separating oneself from, the peer pack in adolescence, it has long-term implications for adult physical health," wrote study co-author Joseph Allen in the journal Psychological Science. The study found that those who enjoyed high-quality friendships and had a high desire to fit in with their peers during adolescence, they had far better health at age 27 than those who separated themselves from their peers during the teenage years. And this held even after the researchers accounted for other factors like income, weight, and drug use. So why is this? Well, strong friendships and a feeling of being part of a group as a teenager it may influence adult health by lowering anxiety and stress levels. I guess the key there is just making sure that your teen is in the right peer group. You're listening to the Darren Marlar Radio Show. How would you like to be a part of the Darren Marlar Radio Show? Well, I would love to get an email from you. If you visit the radio page at darrenmarler.com, you can send me an email for my email bag. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. Well, according to a survey by Driver's Seat Road Rage, Houston, it was the home of the least courteous drivers in America. Instead of howdy, Houston residents are now greeting people with rude hand gestures. Time for today's Moment of Duh. A mugging victim gives the crooks a run for their money, or should I say a run for her money. We got actually two criminal individuals in today's Moment of Duh. These two boneheads, they snatched the purse of Pamela McCarthy and they took off running down the street. Well, what they didn't know was that 40-year-old Pamela was a marathon runner and she chased them for more than a mile before they finally ran into their own apartment. She then called the cops, who came over, retrieved her purse, and arrested them. Duh. How'd you like to find a surefire way to prevent hangovers? I have the solution coming up soon. Hey, I'm Darren Marlar, and today's Question Impossible, in case you missed the question earlier, what was the name of Walt Disney's family dog? Well, the answer, and it probably won't surprise you, no, it's not goofy. Uh, actually, Walt Disney's family dog name was Lady, and she was a poodle. So probably you're referring back to uh, Lady and the Tramp on that one. So do you like chocolate? I mean, who doesn't, right? Well, apparently eating milk chocolate, it can improve your brain activity. Scientists now say that you should eat some milk chocolate before your next exam or your big work project. In fact, I, you know, I use chocolate in my coffee every single day. Uh, that's how I flavor my coffee. If this is how I am when my brain activity is improved, imagine what kind of a moron I am before my first cup of joe.
If you'd like to keep up with everything I do, you can sign up for my newsletter. It's The Marler Sheet. You can sign up at DarrenMarler.com. D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. So, when robbing a liquor store, make sure you're not under the influence of that liquor first. Our Brain on Drugs story is right around the corner. Oh, so, well, speaking of liquor, a, a surefire way to prevent hangovers. I mean, did, you, did you party hardy last night? Well, when you wake up with a headache, nausea, extreme thirst, cotton mouth, you know you've got a hangover, right? And it's terrible. You hate that feeling. Well, here is a 100% guaranteed way to prevent that from happening again. Are you ready? Don't drink too much. I know, it's pretty obvious. I mean, th that's a cold hard fact, though. If you drink to excess, you will have a hangover. I mean, you can count on it, according to Health Day News and research from uh, Utrecht University in the Netherlands. They say the more you drink, the more likely you are to get a hangover, uh, says Joris Vester. He's a professor of pharmaceutical sciences, pharmacology, and psychopharmacology at uh, Utrecht University in the Netherlands. So now here is the here's a second cold fact for you. All those hangover cures, you know, from chugging lots of water to popping vitamin B pills, they don't work. They'll actually do very little to make you feel better. When am I driving in my car? I like to be able to steer. So I I don't drink beer. When I try to communicate, I want for my words to be clear. So I, I don't drink beer. Hi, I'm Darren Marler. If you want to uh, like me, poke me, tweet me, follow me, stalk me, you can find links to all of my social media at DarrenMarler.com. Well, it's time for today's Brain on Drug story. You know, it's about people doing dumb things while under the influence, but addiction is no laughing matter. If you or somebody you know needs help, there is a toll free number you can call. It's 1 800 438 0380. That's the Addiction Hope and Helpline. 1 800 438 0380. Well, when robbing a liquor store, make sure you're not under the influence of it first. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> Proving once again that there is no intelligence test to become a criminal, a Los Angeles gunman demanded cash and a bottle of gin from a clerk at a liquor store. But the clerk refused to give the man liquor until he proved his age, <laughs> so the robber handed over his driver's license. Yep. The clerk memorized the man's name and address, and the thief was arrested. This is your brain on drugs. <laughs> any questions? Hi, I'm Darren Marlar, and if you missed any part of uh, the show today, you can catch up at DarrenMarlar.com. That's D-A-R-R-E-N-M-A-R-L-A-R.com. So how do you keep people from using their phones while driving? I love this. They finally came up with a solution. Researchers have discovered how to stop drivers using their phones when they're behind the wheel without affecting the use of the passengers' phones. A team at Stevens Institute of Technology and Rutgers in New Jersey, they have created a system which shuts down a driver's phone without affecting other people in the vehicle. It utilizes the phone's Bluetooth connection and a vehicle's speakers to detect if the driver is using their mobile phone while driving. And, and you know, this sounds like a great idea up to a point. I mean, what if the person in the back seat needs to make a phone call to the driver? I mean, then what? What kind of idiot are you? I don't know. What kinds are there? Hey, if you'd like to uh, listen to past shows or follow me on Facebook or Twitter, maybe listen to audiobooks that I've narrated and everything else that I do, I have a free mobile app that you can download. It's available uh, in your phone app store right now. Just do a search for Marlar House. Marlar is M-A-R-L-A-R. Search for Marlar House. It's absolutely free right now in your phone app store. So why does your bath towel stink? Well, it's not the towel. It's you. Skin flakes and body soil they get left behind with every use, says Mary Gagliardi, uh, also known as the Dr. Laundry for Clorox. She advises washing a bath towel every seven uses. In between, spread it widely on a rack to avoid having it developed odors, she says. 
If you got a persistent funk, well, that could be grimy buildup in your washer, so run some regular be uh, bleach clean-out cycles to keep your clothes washer stank-free. I'm Darren Marlar. If you like a written transcript of today's show, please call the number at the bottom of your radio. Good night, ladies. Good night, sir. Hit it, sweetheart. That's all, folks.